Jesus here No disclosure, this is missed Confiscated evidence No smoking gun Public has a right to throw This is from the Orange County Register. Female visitor inadvertently locked overnight at an Orange County jail. (laughs) Sheriff's deputies did not notice the woman had fallen asleep in a jail visiting booth. Yeah. Okay. Okay, listen. It's good. Trust me. (laughs) A woman attempting to visit an inmate last weekend at the Theo Lacey Detention Facility in Orange County was inadvertently locked overnight in a jail visiting area. The Orange County Sheriff's Department has confirmed. Sheriff's officials did not disclose the identity of the woman, who was described only as being in her 30s. The woman was at the maximum security jail to visit an inmate on Saturday and was directed to a public visiting area for the barracks section of the facility, confirmed Sheriff's Sheriff's spokesperson Carrie Braun. And you listen to what Carrie Braun says, damn it. (laughs) Braun said the... Inmate the woman wanted to see was unavailable, and she fell asleep in a visiting booth while waiting. No one noticed the woman when the area was closed at 5 p.m. She was not discovered until the area was reopened the next morning at 8. Okay, fuck, man. Orange County Register, get to it. Laceration to her head. What? And then it talks about she has a laceration. What else happened? Huh? Did something come alive like in the, the fucking night at the museum? Was there an adventure? This is the longest fucking article I've ever seen. Okay. I I don't... This is so stupid. She just... It's okay, so she... She was visiting somebody. Okay. We're talking 3,442 inmates. I mean, this is a big place. And she's visiting somebody, you know, the maximum security jail or what have you. And then she ends up falling asleep in the visiting booth. That, but the article heading says inadvertently locked overnight at Orange County Jail. It's not inadvertent. You fall, fell asleep. Well, what's weird about that? Yeah, you got locked in an Orange County Jail, but you were in the visitor's area. You fell asleep. Ha, 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 ha. That's so funny. It's so interesting. I'm so glad we read it and didn't just waste five minutes. <laughs> Actually, what? Two minutes and 14 seconds. Well, I guess that's not too bad. Can we make some kind of joke about this? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> A lot goes to say about how, you know, uh, attentive the Orange County <laughs> Detention Center employees are. I don't know. Maybe maybe you guys uh, who are incarcerated there that are allowed to listen to podcasts, which I doubt. But if any of you catch wind of this shit, somehow, some way, then I would try busting out. If, if, you, if you're planning to escape, or even if you're not, just say, fuck it, try it. Because apparently a woman could fall asleep in the visitor area. No one's going to notice shit. Welcome to No Disclosure. This podcast is brought to you by Asylum 817 Productions, Spotify, and DistroKid. This podcast is where we go on the news, see what's happening in the world, and based like fine, expensive turkeys in the sheer audacity and craziness that is our news media. This is from Local10.com. It's a local news thing place. Wasabi, shut up! Oh my god. He's been really meowy lately, like super whiny. I don't know what the deal is. Well, he's uh, well, he's six. Uh, yeah, so he's probably going through his midlife crisis right now. That I I didn't think about that actually. Carry on, just do it a little bit quieter so I can record, please. I understand midlife crisis, dude. I get it. I didn't go on that. I didn't. I didn't fuck the lady in human resources. I didn't get a babysitter. You know, I didn't do any of that. But I did go a little crazy. Cassie w- understood. She was totally cool about it. I have a drum set worth more than my car, and <laughs> I redecorated an entire room to you know just basically be my fucking man cave. I went a little crazy, but yeah, my midlife crisis wasn't as bad as some of you guys out there. Damn it. Okay, so local ten. <laughs> Woman sings gospel songs, urinates on herself after DUI arrest following a Florida Keys police chase. Florida. Why wouldn't it be Florida? Monroe County, to be specific. <laughs> we got a Florida woman today. That's awesome. Authorities have released a new information regarding a dangerous police pursuit that took place on Sunday in the Florida Keys. Florida Highway Patrol troopers arrested 41. You're 41 fucking years old. 41 fucking years old, and you're still acting the fool like this? 
Florida Highway Patrol troopers arrested 41-year-old Courtney Epps of Taylor, South Carolina, after chasing her speeding vehicle of US-1, authorities said. I know you're from South Carolina, but you know what? You did crazy shit and you're in Florida. Doesn't matter where you're born. You're a Florida woman. Something there got to your head. You drank the water, didn't you? According to her arrest report, she was first observed in gray Chevy Suburban speeding while going north and the southbound lanes, ignoring troopers completely as they pursued her with their lights and sirens on. Not a care in the world. Troopers said they tracked Epps' speed between 90 and 120 miles an hour as she traveled across the Sven Seven Mile Bridge. And then Marathon, she maintained that speed regardless of oncoming traffic. Not a care in the world. There were two attempts made. Using spike traps. Second one was successful. Thank God. She continued anyway. <laughs> Didn't give a shit. Just kept going. On the, on the rim. On the rim. The vehicle eventually crashed into a construction site and she was taken into custody. She had extremely constricted pupils and did not respond to verbal or physical stimulation. Only stared forward in absolute silence. That's not fucking scary. While getting checked out at the hospital, Trooper said she urinated on herself in the lobby while loudly singing gospel songs. <laughs> and she would alternate between sleeping, singing, and talking to herself. Wow, Florida. So yeah, just picture this, okay? She was on a high-speed chase with police, ended up failing at that, crashed. They take her to the hospital, where she just starts busting out gospel songs at the top of her voice, urinating on herself. Falls asleep, wakes up, starts doing it again. <laughs> the news, you know, uh, us, people outside of Florida, we, you know, talk about this and comment on it, and we have our weird news segments and all that. F to, uh, this is so normal in Florida. I kind of want to go there just once, just to visit. I want to see how long it takes before I see a person running outside, naked, wet, and shouting, something i just i, I want to see how long it's going to be before i witness that i'll probably have to get right back on the fucking plane it'll probably happen right there at the airport be like okay cool florida and i can go after initially agreeing to field sobriety tests she refused saying god the father told me to stop <laughs> i don't blame him i don't blame him let's say beyond let's say you know just for argument's sake that old jc was behind the wheel of this one and she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll take your field sobriety test. <laughs> and uh, piss me some money. And Jesus is like, you should probably not do that. Uh, no, no. It, Jesus, man. It's cool. Okay? It's cool. Because penguins, I know they don't like Christmas. But you know that Christmas is like your birthday. You should probably not take that field sobriety test. Okay, fine, I'll tell him. But afterwards, afterwards, we're getting some ramen. Huh? You said we would. You said we would, Jesus. Jesus, you said we would. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You know? <laughs> That's how it went. God was there. I saw the entire exchange. Yeah, Jesus would tell you the same thing. Don't take the fucking sobriety test. Maybe that wasn't God you were talking to. Maybe that was a, a fucking lamppost would tell you not to take the sobriety test. That's not a good idea. When you're urinating on yourself and singing gospel songs, I know you're a normal Floridian at that point, but it's still a sobriety test. You don't want to do that because everybody in Florida is on something. She faces several charges, no shit, including DUI and a felony charge for fleeing or eluding with disregard for safety of persons or property. There you go. Are they going to charge Jesus too? This is from APnews.com. You know what? I actually kind of want to save that one. Let's skip that one for a second. Uh, I'm going to rearrange these articles a little bit because that one, you're going to like. You're going to like that. And more serious news. I hardly ever do this on the show where I get really heavy, you know, and we discuss something that, you know, it's just more of an emotional emotional nature, like more serious like that. I rarely do it on the show. So as I get through this, this is from Fox 19. A Hamilton man was shot in the balls by his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> I want to observe a moment of silence for this man's testicles. Okay, so this is from Hamilton, Ohio. We should play Taps. 
very, very slowly. A pair of testicles has left this planet, ladies and gentlemen. If you felt a disturbance in the force, that's why. Just imagine this guy's testicles growing little angel wings and flying up there to heaven. That's what happened. That's what happened. It's tragic. <laughs> Whenever a pair of balls is sacrificed on this planet, a demon gets its wings. It's true. Hamilton, Ohio. A man says he does not want an apology from his ex-girlfriend. Well, yeah. Even after she shot him in the testicles. Charlie Glenn says the charges against 36-year-old Tanya Nestor are from when she shot him. Talked with Fox 19 now about what happened when he was shot by his ex. He says, and I quote, She wanted me to take a walk with her and I found out she had a pit. <clears throat> Sorry. She said it was a pellet gun, and I said, let me see it because I'm not going anywhere with you if you got a gun. She pulled it out and shot me. I shot him in the balls? I mean, what did he do? Shit. You know, because I always think to myself, like, okay, what's the other side of this story? You know, what the other person do? But damn, I'm not really seeing anything. Of course, they're just getting his side of it. <laughs> they arrested her about a half a mile from the crime scene. Oh, my God. One shot went through his balls into his butt cheek and out the other butt cheek. You even messed up his ass? Damn, lady. Jeez. He must have done something really bad. Not only you blow his balls off, but you messed up his butt too? God, I hope you could still poop. Because, you know, going to, man, living without the balls... You just got to look on the bright side of things, okay? Remember what Jack said? Always look at the bright side of your life. Remember that? Okay. You don't have any balls anymore. You, you need something in there. So what I would do, I would replace one with, I'd, I'd put like a Tomodachi in there and a lotion dispenser for the other one. There you go. I would replace one of my balls with a Tomodachi or some kind of GPS device, you know, where I could always find... You know, or something, or the government can, you know, always make sure they know where I am in case I get shot in the balls again. And the other NAD you could replace with a lotion dispenser. I would totally do that. You could replace that with red rope licorice dispenser, but either way, it's pretty cool. This is from <laughs> Ars Technica. Ars Technica. That's what it's called, ARS Technica. Is this a fucking news website for pirates? Ars Technica. <laughs> Ars Technica. You want to hear a funny joke? Pirate walks into a bar with the ship's wheel in his pocket. Bartender goes, man, why you got the ship's wheel in your pocket? He goes, ah, it's driving me nuts. Worm's rear end. <laughs> a worm's rear end develops its own head, wanders off to go mate. Yes, there's a worm whose rear end detaches, develops its own head, and wanders off to mate. Well, now I know where my ex-wife came from. The butt even grows its own eyes, antennae, and brain. Isn't that some shit? You could lop off a piece of yourself and say, yeah, get to fucking see you Tuesday. Bring me back a paper. That's awesome. Some do it horizontally. Some do it vertically. Some do it sexually. Some asexually. Then there are some organisms that would rather grow an ass that develops into an autonomous appendage equipped with its own antennae, eyes, and brain. Damn. I've been called an asshole before, but to worms like these, that must be like a compliment. This appendage will detach from the main's body and squirm away, carrying gonads that will emerge from... <laughs> I got to say gonads. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> this is a good day. I got to read an article... That has the words gonads in it. How often in normal daily conversation will you get to use the word gonads? I say nads a lot, but the actual proper pronunciation, I got to say gonad today. That will merge with those from other disembodied rear ends and give rise to a new generation of assholes. Mr. Gudges Nippopobica. I can't really say that. Okay, let's fucking try for once. Mega shit. It's not mega shit. Megacillus nipponica. That's as close as you're going to get. It really exists here on this planet. Otherwise known as the Japanese green psyllid worm, it reproduces by a process known as stolonization, which sounds like the brainchild of sci-fi horror genius, but evolved into some annelid segmented worms to give future generations the best chance at survival. 
what was still a mystery until now, actually, was exactly how that bizarre appendage or stolon could form its own fucking head in the middle of the worm's body. Turns out this is a wonder of gene regulation. That's pretty cool. So it detaches its own ass. Ass grows into a different person. Person goes to mate. Wouldn't it be weird? Okay, wouldn't it be weird? Just uh, pick, I know my, I know I got problems. I have major problems. My brain does this, okay? And you know this by now, so I don't need to apologize. Imagine your own ass detaching. It grows into another you, and that other you wants to fuck you. <laughs> well, that's weird. I don't know. Would you do it? Because if it's if it's another you, then technically it's not gay. Technically, it's just jerking off. All right, this is from AP News. <laughs> I want you to think about that before you go to bed tonight. Really think about it. This is from <laughs> Washington. It's a challenge for all new parents. Getting enough sleep while keeping a close eye on their newborns. Penguins, though, this will freak you out, okay? Chinstrap penguins in Antarctica need to guard their eggs and chicks around the clock in crowded, noisy colonies. You know penguins. God damn it! They're the best parents ever. Best fucking parents ever. Penguins. They nod off. <laughs> Scientists found this out. They actually nod off thousands of times a day, but only for about four seconds at a time. No shit. To stay vigilant, <laughs> they take micro sleeps 11 hours a day, and then for like every few minutes, they only, t they only sleep for about four seconds at a time. Uh, that's crazy. Sometimes the penguins go for weeks without any kind of significant sleep. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. <laughs> I wish you were a penguin, Dad. You piece of shit. <laughs> you weren't even half a penguin. <laughs> Fuck you, Dad. You know, these penguins look like drowsy drivers. They blink their eyes open and shut. It's kind of cute, actually. They do it 24-7 for several weeks at a time. That's pretty cool. How? What's surprising is that they're able to function and successfully raise young. You know what I mean? They're not all, yeah, yeah, go play outside. I know it's a killer whale. Fuck it! I don't think it's a bit of sleep. Tell the whale to bring you back home at about 10. In one piece. <laughs> Get it? Did you do one piece thing? Okay. All right. They lay their eggs in pebble nests in November. As of many other kinds of penguins, mated pairs share parenting duties. See, that's why they're awesome. One parent tends to the eggs and chicks alone while the other goes off fishing or for family meals. While the adults don't face any natural predators in the breeding season, large birds called brown skuas, they prey on the eggs. Everything alive preys on the fucking eggs. Everything does. That's cool. You're awesome parents there, penguins. Thank <laughs> you, too. <laughs> you're awesome penguins there. Uh, awesome penguins? Yeah, you're awesome penguins there, parents. That works if you switch the words around. I'm a fucking moron. It works if you switch the words around. See? So I still made a proper sentence. I still made a proper sentence, Dad. I know you said I couldn't, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Bastard. This is from WSB TV. Oh, I like that. I like that. Good call letters. It has a real kind of radio, old-school TV sound on it. This is from WSB TV. 75 years of bringing you the news, see? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Woman arrested for pouring gasoline, trying to burn down Martin Luther King Jr.'s birth home. Wow. And this just goes without saying, okay? I I'm not trying to be that guy, but I'm going to be that guy for just a second. She's black. I'm just going to let that sit there. A black girl arrested for pouring gasoline and trying to burn down Martin Luther King Jr.'s birth home. It's not like she didn't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Are you aware of what this guy did for your people? Are you aware of what he accomplished for your race? He was a, he was a wonderful man. You try to burn down his birth home? What the fuck's wrong with you? Atlanta police are investigating after a woman attempted to burn down Dr. Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birth home. Why? Police told Channel 2 Action News. I mean, that's deplorable no matter what race you are. I hope you trying to I hope you get what I'm saying. 
I know, white guy said the word black on the air. <laughs> I'm automatically an asshole. But no, I'm serious. You're a black girl. What the fuck are you doing? This guy, he's a hero to all of us, yes. But especially should be a hero to you, you fucking moron. Police told Channel 2 Action News, Action News, that they were called to King's birth home on Auburn near the King Center just after 5.45 p.m. Great. When they arrived, they found two off-duty NYPD officers who had been visiting the center, had a suspect detained until they could arrive. 26-year-old Lanisha Satrice Henderson, charged with her criminal attempt to arson and criminal attempt to interference with government property. Wow. She poured gasoline on the fucking thing. And two tourists interrupted her. Good. That's awesome. A couple of people stepped in. That's... Ooh, nowadays, that shit's pretty dangerous. I mean, you'll never know if some fucking incel wants to walk into your place of business and just go ape shit, you know, because he can't. You just say it, it's a scary place now. Two tourists from Utah put an end to that shit. That's amazing. Video from a witness. Oh, I, I got to see that. Woman dressed in all black, pouring gasoline. Wow. I am so glad that that house is okay. That's crazy. I, I We don't know why either. There's nothing in this article that says why. <clears throat> They're working with the FBI. You know, King's home is federal property, right? So she's going to be chasing some major, major fucking charges. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s house. Not only is it that, but it's federal property. Cool. Lock her ass away. Throw away the fucking key. Next, she'll try to burn down Gandhi's underpants. This is from BBC. Kelmsford man bended from... St what? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I just, uh, I couldn't even finish my sentence because this guy's mugshot is awesome. Have you ever seen Napoleon Dynamite where Uncle Rico and Kip go to the neighbor's house, the girl, you know, and she, they're taking the photos for, you got to see Napoleon Dynamite, okay? Otherwise you won't get this shit. They're taking the photos for their work, for their business IDs. And she tells Uncle Rico that you're, you know, she tries to get him to make this certain facial expression for his work ID, you know, to get a good photo. And she goes, you're in the ocean surrounded by tiny little seahorses. And the face that Uncle Rico makes is the same face this guy's making in his mugshot. <laughs> because Uncle Rico, he nailed it. If you were in the ocean surrounded by tiny little dancing seahorses, you would make that face. That guy's making that face right now. But you know what? He's not in a movie, nor is he pretending. He's making that face in real life. Kills from the <laughs> you only make that face for one, one reason and one reason only. If you were in the ocean surrounded by tiny little seahorses, that's, your, that's the only excuse to make that face. If you make it outside of that, <laughs> then you probably do. You probably did what this guy did. Banned from cycling. He was caught riding to probation on a bike. <laughs> a man, yeah, a man was banned from cycling. How do you get banned from cycling? What kind of stupid fucking piece of shit do you have to be? What kind of fucking man child are you that you get banned from cycling? I can understand people wanting to work out and all that stuff, but a bike is a toy. It's a toy. You know, it's kind of weird that you're a grown man riding around a bike anyway. But I know for some people, that's your only method of transportation. I totally get it. Yeah, it's a great workout, apparently. Um, so I'm not going to give you too much shit. But how do you get banned from cycling? How? <laughs> His name's Jake Carter. He's 27, grown-ass man, was given a criminal behavior order in November, which banned him from using a bike or e-scooter. You got banned from e-scooters, too? What the fuck did you do? He, he <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I just find this tickles me. He breached the order twice and on one occasion cycled to his appointment with the probation service. So he's banned from bicycling and he keeps going to his probation meetings on a bike. <laughs> what a fucking moron. A complete lack of respect. I I don't know. I think some people are just so dumb that they don't consider the word respect. You know, they hear the word respect and it's like peanuts. Wah, 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 wah. That, that's all they hear. Carter of Med, Med, Meadgate? I'm sorry, England. Carter of Mead. I have this hair stuck to my glasses. 
Ugh. Those of you who wear glasses, do you know what I'm talking about? You get this fucking hair, like, stuck on the edge of it, and it's in your peripheral vision, and it won't go away. You fucking annoying. <sighs> so as I stop and peel a fucking cat hair off of my spectacles, <laughs> let's continue. Sir Graham Thomas. Ooh, I like your name. Sir Graham Thomas of SXSSX Police. Who are you? My name is Sergeant Graham Thomas of Essex Police. You show a complete lack of respect. You will learn once I throw you in the tower. We'll come visit you in a fortnight, eh? And then we'll see if you want to act the fool then. Carter of Meadgate Avenue. See, that sounds medieval too. And you, Carter of Meadgate Avenue, Great Baddo. You breached the order at Kelmsford Magistrate's Court. What say you in your defense? You know, it's that. it does. It sounds medieval. And then he takes that mugshot, and they're just like, okay. <laughs> we know where to put this guy. He demonstrated a complete lack of respect. I, I don't know. I think respect kind of sailed over his head. For his criminal behavior order by breaching it within days, and he keeps showing up to his probation meetings on a bike. What a fucking idiot. <laughs> I just love his mugshot. I almost want to make that... <laughs> I almost want to make that the thumbnail. This guy just has the most bemused, but kind of whimsical look on his face. Like, you know, like... How do I describe this? You're sitting in your living room, okay... And then you blink, and all of a sudden, everything looks like a Disney cartoon. Animals from the woods come into your living room and start singing you a song about how precious life is. That's the same. You would have the same look on your face as this guy. It's a weird look. Watch Napoleon Dynamite and look at that. Watch that scene. The Uncle Rico face. You'll know. This is from BBC again. The Bibica. Nice to see you again, BBC. I like you guys. I like your news over there. Woman who assaulted Chipotle worker sentenced to fast food job for two months. <laughs> yeah, see? Good. That's how we need to be doing this. That's how we need to sentence people. That way they won't commit crimes. I think it's more of a deterrent. Creative sentencing. I love it. Guy steals a truck. This happened in Texas, remember? It was well, back in the 90s. Dude stole a truck, so the judge sentenced him to, sl to live in the bed of a truck for three days. Dude never did shit again. <laughs> I think that's awesome. I love that creative sentencing stuff. An Ohio woman was convicted. Really? It's from the BBC, and it's an article about something that happened here. Okay. An Ohio woman who was convicted of assault for hurling a burrito bowl at a... What the fuck? Why'd you throw a burrito bowl at somebody? Those things are awesome. You wasted a burrito bowl? My God, just imagine a burrito bowl growing little wings and flying to heaven. Now it's up there with that guy's testicles. It's just burrito bowls and testes up there today, kids. It's been a weird fucking 24 hours in heaven, let me tell you. Every time a burrito bowl dies, I, an angel gets his wings. I don't know. Every time an angel farts, a demon gets its wings. Okay, so from Rosemary Hayne, 39. She has to work at a fast food job for two months now. Wow. Might as well sentence her to two months in fucking hell. Captured in a viral video screaming. I bet she doesn't get to keep her paycheck either. I wouldn't. I wouldn't I wouldn't let her keep it. I'm like, fuck you, it's going to the it's going to the going to the magistrate. It's going to the magistrate court. We're going to use it to build a new torture chamber and you know. 180 days in jail, what she was originally supposed to do, but the judge had a better idea. You didn't get your burrito bowl the way you like it, and this is how you respond? Judge Timothy Gilligan told Hayne at her damn sentencing in Parma, Ohio. Oh, yeah, it was in Ohio. I get, I forgot. Because I'm reading something from the BBC. Maybe they were British. I don't know. Let's just keep pretending that they were British. Let's pretend that the Brits didn't try to tax the fuck out of people for no reason, and we're still all British. Let's just pretend that, okay? Judge Gilligan told, because then, then my story will make sense, what I just said. She cut off 60 days in jail. She agreed to work at least 20 hours a week at a fast food restaurant for two months. That sucks. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> 
Cool, though. I mean, I really, I, I like creative sentencing like that. That's awesome. That should happen more often. I think it's more of a deterrent, you know? That's crazy. It's like someone, like, hurts his fishing buddy and, like, gets an assault, whatever, you know? Like, the judge goes, okay, for the next six months, you have to fish with your wiener. Like, <laughs> that person had never committed a crime again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, that's the <laughs> fishing with your wiener. I've done it three times. It ain't pleasant. But you know what? You don't truly appreciate feeling okay like your normal moments without a little bit of pain. You need the pain to appreciate the not pain. You need the dark to appreciate the light. You know what I mean? You need the feeling of being bit on the tip of your whacker with a large mouth bass or a catfish to appreciate not being bit on the tip of your whacker with a large mouth bass, catfish, or a baby bull shark. I've felt all of them. That's all, friends. Special thanks to this week's sponsors who make this show possible. And I'm sorry, by the way, for... Be sponsoring this show. Did you listen to it before you signed up? Did you really? Okay, because I tell everybody before you buy an ad, if it's no disclosure, I always tell you guys, listen to the show because I've gotten many a message, many a message. Someone buying ad space on the show and then they call me back. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I had no idea my show would be attached to this, but I told you to listen to it beforehand. So special weeks of this special thanks to this week's sponsors who actually did that. Make sure to check out the link to our Patreon page in this episode's description where as little as a dollar a month, you can get everything from bonus episodes, ad-free episodes, giveaways of certain tiers, outtakes, bloopers, a podcast just for the patrons. Who does that? This guy. Special thanks to the patrons, by the way. The Conkle Homestead YouTube channel, Donald Haynes, Dillagaff, Kristen Belt. I appreciate you. This show would not go if it wasn't for you. All right. That's, uh, yeah, that's all we got. Bye-bye, my babies. I love you all. And be fancy. Oh, boy. That was a good one. That was a good one. When I go to heaven, that's the first thing I want to meet is that guy's testicles. I just, I just want to give it a pat on the back and be like, you know, you, you made it through, man. You made it. I mean, guys, boys. You made it through. Now go get me a fucking burrito bowl. Ain't you know